So in my experience, I, I'll give an illustration just from the last year from some research that I've been conducting. So most of my research is about peacekeeping and I wanted to conduct research uh, in the Central African Republic. Um, it's a larger project on the use of force. But I faced obstacles. I faced obstacles both from within the academy and um, from the UN system. And so from within the academy, I, uh, as a scholar in the United States, um, to, uh, to engage in research, we, we have certain expectations of what we can do. And um, to do this project uh, in the Central African Republic, which is very diff it's a difficult place to do research. Uh, I, in order to gain access to the UN system, I wound up uh, uh, becoming part of a documentary film crew. So the way to do my research, to have access to the UN, I've been studying the UN for years. I worked for the UN in the early 1990s, and and I um, and I've been studying peacekeeping pretty much ever since. Uh, but as an academic, to have access to the UN without working for the UN, we could get maybe an hour with so and so um, at some point, and then you go back to your hotel. Uh, but what journalists have that scholars don't have is journalists can be embedded with UN troops and so you can actually witness what they do day after day because militaries have this uh, practice of, of taking journalists with them while they go out on patrol and while they do the things that they do. And so um, in order to have that access I had to become a journalist. I had to sort of disavow my scholarly so the UN doesn't know what to do with scholars, but they do know what to do with journalists. <laughs> so to do that research, I had to change my hat. Um, and it would be lovely if the UN could think about how to engage scholars more directly, but for now they only know how to engage journalists. And then from the academy side, um, becoming or working as a journalist is, is completely taboo. So uh, in, in, especially in scholarship in the U.S., uh, there is no, there's probably little chance that you can advance in your career if you do this kind of a project, like working on a documentary film or working as a journalist or even going to the conference we've been having right now. Um, it's seen as a waste of time because it's not contributing directly to um, your research which should be scholarly in nature. The, the research I was doing um, was obviously scholarly in nature, but it meant changing my hat and changing my hat to work on a documentary film. Uh, well, I've seen what, some, what happens to some of my colleagues in the US, and they simply don't get tenure, right? Uh, the goal is to advance through your academic career and get tenure, and you, you won't get tenure if you do too many media-related projects. It just, it's, you can be denied. In other words, it's kind of like committing career suicide. To engage too much in policy work, um, or uh, or with yeah yeah actually in policy related work. So, from the side of the academy, from my experience, just in this last year, to do research in the Central African Republic, I had I had to achieve a certain level in the academy first before I could branch out. And it would be nice if the academy could loosen up a little bit and allow for other types of research. Um, and and engagements to be acceptable. Um, and then, so from the other side, from the institutional side, from the UN, and it's, it's true of other, uh, whether it's NATO or the EU, it's very difficult for scholars to have access um, because they're insular organizations. So um, the, the way I've managed to bridge the gap is to kind of, uh, in this project, uh, it hasn't been easy. It's involved sort of skirting around and, and figuring out funny ways to engage in the kind of research I would I want to engage in, which is both relevant to scholarship and to policy, and to trying to understand what kinds of policies would be better, uh, might better bring about peace, in this case, in the Central African Republic.